fact, this is actually, notice this image, this is a UUID, a giant UUID. It is different than that guy. This is the UUID of the container. Think of that as the branch. And then do a Docker images. You'll see that, where else, uh, which one did we do this off of? CentOS 6. Which one did I do it off of? Well, let's do this. Dash true. Was, uh, e. Dash true. Dash A. <coughs> All right, so that's a lot easier to see, right? So, oh, here, let's even do something else. Let's do this. Let's do Docker tag. Let's do this. So once you commit an image, you can tag it so you know what it is. Oops. I didn't like that. Oh, that's right, because that's, where's the history at? We need to go back and try this real list. Because I did not grab that UUID. Did I? Did I pass it? Oh, there it is. Nice. All right, so now we need to docker tag this guy, and then we'll call it Scott. So now when we do a docker images tree, you'll see what? a Scott in there later. See that guy? So, see this guy? He, he branched from the main one. You see, that's the guy I just committed back. Now notice, I would actually already went ahead. Actually, I didn't show you what this is, but this is actually one I created with a docker file. And so we're kind of at the same level here. We're both branches of this guy. I could actually fire up this guy, too. So if I do a Docker images, you can see that uh, I have an updated guy. This is one that actually built a Docker file off of the base guy. Let's do a Docker run on that guy. Dash I. Let's do bash on that guy. So this guy has actually had. So he actually, oh, and I forgot I can't actually run bash, because I'll have to show you the Docker file. Used. It's an example Docker file used that. It comes into it, and when we get into this, this will get down in the weeds. Long story short is that will kick you out of that one automatically because, here, I'll show you what the Docker file looks like. I can show you what it's like to build a Docker file, so I'll delete that guy and pull it away. So this is what a Docker file looks like. It's actually very simple. It has a from command that matters a lot. Then it has a maintainer command that, you know, you give it your email address. Then you tell it what you want to run inside, and then you can give it an entry point. So what that guy did was it tailed yum, you saw it tailed yum log and exited. <coughs> so let me run this guy again, watch this. <coughs> it doesn't care what command I gave it to, it just keeps exiting from there because it just keeps tailing yum log. So you can see I had updated this guy like two days ago or whenever I did this. Let's blow that guy away. Docker images. Let's clean all this stuff up. Docker, RMI, so remove image. Let's get rid of that guy. I thought they had some kind of a setup for like uh, generating a lot of uh, instances. Let's do like learning. You could have every student log in with a container and all the instructor. So. So that's a base one. This is the updated one. So these actually look like in your files. Oh, okay. So here's what's happening. So Docker ps dash. So you see all these guys? It, you can't delete an image that those are branches of, obviously, right? Because if you blew away their base image, they would just no longer know what to do, and that would be corruption. So, so what I can do is I can actually do a. a Actually, here, I'll just go here, it's easier. I'm lazy, I have this command in my article, so if you just run this guy, you can see it will actually just delete all those guys. And as long as Device Mapper doesn't decide to crack the bed, this will work. Oh, you want to see what it looked like. Here, what's well, deleting it? Here, watch this Docker info. So in this guy right here, So there's um, metadata. Here. There's some cache metadata. Like here. Uh, that wasn't good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so like that's basically, yeah, now my terminal's like, like oh. that wasn't. <laughs> so it's basically a bunch of metadata, and then um, there is like an MNT here, and then it's this crap. 
those are some of these directories. Four Yeah, four. So now it's blowing all those guys away. So now let's do a Docker PS A. So now there's no more containers running. They're all gone. And now we will be able to do all kinds of image management because we can get rid of these guys. So like that guy will now be able to delete. And I don't know what just happened to my laptop. That was nice. That's something. I'm thinking that you guys got to see a bug in action. Ah, I think I locked it up. That's how you lock up a rel box. It doesn't happen that often, but apparently it can. Welcome to Demo Hell. All right, let's push the button. I found a bug. How do I file that one? <laughs> it says all over the thing. It's not released. Quality. It's not. It's like point eight something. Send a Microsoft report. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Four HP. That was awesome. Oh, <laughs> battery out. I'm booting right now. You are. Yep. It's not showing there yet, but it will. Damn you, Linux. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I've never seen that happen. First time I've seen that one. Not production yet. I know. It was going so good. What kind of system requirements would it take? Oh, there you go. <coughs> For what? System requirements. For what? For Docker? <coughs> As a man jumped up. I mean, it doesn't use much, so whatever you have, I mean, however big containers you need. You think of the OS more as capacity for the container, so if you were to run 10 big containers that run in like little tiny apps, you could do that. You know, if you had just something that takes 10 megs, say some C binary that only takes like 3 megs of RAM, you know, 3 megs of RAM to run. So you run, you can run a program inside these docs? Yeah, you can limit how big they are too. I blame it because I was on the battery. That's why. It's all because of the battery. Some of the movies today are uh, edited in the Linux environment. What do you think it would take for uh, a Docker in order to contain uh, the editing? Um, because you're not talking about megabytes there. Oh, there we go. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't. I honestly have no idea. Wait a minute, you're a specialist. I don't do movies. <laughs> I work for DreamWorks. I have no idea. No, okay. Uh, you too. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you want to do? You want to do like conversions and whatnot? Well, you're talking about gigabytes of data. Yeah. And, you know, because um, uh, Avengers, uh, the first one, was done on Linux. And oh yeah. Editing. Yeah. Well, actually, Dream, I was joking, but DreamWorks, there really is a huge red action where they play Shrek and all kinds of other crap. And there's a ton of examples that are all done on a row. All more done on a row. And actually, they do use some virtualization, from what I understand. They do actually carve things up differently so they can kind of run these guys. They're like, okay, this frame's going to take two days, but let's slow this guy out because we actually need to do this guy. You know, and so they, they do do some, like, capacity. Management. I don't know deeply what they do, but I know it's something along those lines. So, do you think Docker's I think that will be a kick-ass use case because it doesn't eat up any resources. It's native processes, basically. So you don't have to virtualize a whole other kernel. There's no translation. I mean, it's great. So um, you need, based on that, you might need a bigger uh, workforce. So, oh, you guys aren't seeing this one. Uh, yeah, so it has to support a multi-core or multi-processor environment. And that's all I have to say about that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> okay, let's delete these guys so you can see me do some image management. Let's hopefully we don't crash the OS again. All right. Now I've got these butterflies every time I hit enter on this. <laughs> okay. Is that a Lenovo laptop? This is standard issue right here. All right. Oh. So pretty clean now. Now I've got a. These guys are actually the same image. You see, they actually share the same image ID. Those are just different tags for them. 
Can you guys see that? So, so basically you tag things just like you do with code. And then, you know, this one is, uh, this guy is basically that guy too. So that's the, that's the one that lives on the public registry server. Whenever you see that father link, you know? But I get lazy and I want to be able to just use them locally without having to type that big long thing. So, you know, I'll just do like Docker or whatever, you know, it's just that guy or whatever. Uh, that probably won't. Yeah, see, if you don't put the dash I and dash T, it won't work. But if you do a Docker PS now, that guy left the hard drive laying around, basically. So now I want to delete that guy. So let's show you what. Uh, we have a Docker file I can mess with. So here's a Docker file. Let me VI this guy. I'll show you what a Docker build looks like. So let's comment this out so we can actually use the image. Um, and then let's get rid of this crap. Actually, no, let's not get rid of that crap. Uh, do it on. Yeah, actually, who cares? I've got another. All right, so let's do this. You guys get to see me do it in action. Here's here's winging it. Uh, other Linux. Oh, that was great. That was awesome. Other I touch pads. Linux. I know. I hate these touch pads. Slash CentOS six dash base. And then what, instead of this, let's just do something fast. Like let's do yum update. What can we update that's small? Or like a game or something. I don't know. See if that even works. I don't know if that works. So let's do this. Oh yeah, that is nice. No, I appreciate it. Oh, I can do it. I'll get that back. I have uh... actually no, it's right here. Duh. <laughs> so my my Microsoft mouse. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so that'd be good mice. The keyboards. That's it, bad software. This is not Microsoft. So, I don't know, non Microsoft. So, you can see this guy. So, when I to give this doc, it'll actually build this guy in the, in the local root. Let's see what happens. So, it'll actually go to build a, a child image of that CentOS base, and it will call it CentOS 6 base updated. Uh, let's see what this guy does. This is on SSD with a decent amount of RAM. So, you can see it's building the guy. It's running the container. That's what happened run the container. Um, it's actually trying to do a HTTP up, D update. I don't know if that will actually work, but it's something. You see it's actually going out to the internet, doing a yum update. Well, it builds that new image, essentially, inside there. See, kind of mind-bending the way you think about building a Docker image. What's it building it from? It's building it from that image that I had, that base image that I had listed when I said Docker images. So if you do this. Uh, so how do you create that initial base image? You get them certified from a vendor or you create them yourself. And I'll show you how you create them yourself. But just assume that you get them from somewhere for now. And then I'll dig, I'll show you at the end how that works. So that, that yum update is not looking real hot. <coughs> Okay, I should be able to do it. Oh, that's why. I wonder what the heck. And that's why you don't do things like that. I didn't find anything. Whatever. So it'll keep on going. That's the power of the community right there. So, um, so successfully built a new image. Watch this. Docker images dash A. Uh, actually, let's do dash A. So you can see this CentOS guy, he now has a child. So that's the, this is the, this is the, the main one. And then every time you run a run command, <coughs> it creates one in between. And then the final guy is that guy. So that's like it sealed it at the end. So you see how it added a little bit? It added some log crap and other stuff. So it went from 1.7 to 1.737. So it added just a little bit of log data and other crap. And there's the, so now I can fire this guy out. I should have actually done something interesting yet. Let's do this. Um, are each of those little images a gigabyte or, or two gigabytes? Or are they, or is it They're just, branched, so they're just a little bit bigger. They're just the incremental. Though. They're just the incremental. Here, watch this. We'll echo. You son of a. So here's the problem. I can't actually disable that stupid trackpad. There's really? There's no way to disable it at this laptop. Yeah, there's no function for it. I'd have to figure out how to do it in X or whatever, and I can go that. Proper typing. So, proper typing posture is the way to fix the problem. If I just lean back. Just above the keyboard. 
Okay, here we go. It didn't work. Uh, echo. Yes, no two until 2020, baby. Uh, Etsy slash Fred. So we'll just put something there so you can kind of see what this looks like. So let's do another build. Docker images. Make sure to pull this guy. <coughs> Let's do a build again. So we're going to build that guy again. Should blaze this time because it's not going to sit there and hang. And it echoed Fred into Etsy Fred, blah, blah, blah. It's running it. And it built. So now we can do Docker images, dash dash tree. You can see this guy is the updated guy. So let's run this guy. Docker run dash i dash t dash rm, and then let's tell it. Let's do this. Let's do bash. And then we can cat Etsy friend. You see, it's there. So you can now see how you can get to a point where you can do all this magical stuff while you're doing the core build builds, and it does that once, and then whenever you deploy from that, it's atomic. You don't have to ever worry about you know that stuff in between. You only do it when you build those core builds. So now you've kind of asynchronously released yourself from having to have your infrastructure be up all the time, all the surrounding infrastructure. You still have to have DNS servers in place to add DNS and things like that, but at least some of the build infrastructure can now go back to being like <coughs> eight, 8 to 5 infrastructure instead of 24 by 7 infrastructure. So let's talk about where you get the images. RHEL 7, you'll be able to just get one from, from Red Hat. Um, with the way I made these, though, I will show you. I actually made these. Actually, I think it's down at the bottom. So, so here's what I did, create a base image. So I literally create a VM with CentOS 4, 5, and 6 in them. Then I logged in and I did this. I literally just excluded, I literally did a tar. Tar dash dash numeric owner, dash dash exclude slash proc, dash dash exclude slash sys, and then dash, you know, CVF, and then create a tar file. Then I copied it out of the VM. You know, I just basically r it down to the local host. And then you cat it, and then you do Docker import, and you tell it what you want it to call, what to be called, and that just creates it. It's really easy. So now, obviously, you can imagine that's a very simple way to do it. Obviously, you want that to be a good known starting point. Um, if you do this, watch this. Um, Docker. How do we do a search? CentOS. So this will actually go out and search Docker.io, index.docker.io. And these are all the images that are out on the internet that I can pull out. So you can see people have made a ton of CentOS ones. This top one, though, that comes back, that's the one that they created as of April, 12 April 2014. So it's pretty cool because it's at least a known good starting point. They have whatever methodology they use to create it. The downside is, is when are they going to update that again? I have no idea. So if you're really building infrastructure that has to be the same for a period of time, you know, this is more like community, I just use whatever I want. If I'm just doing some testing, I don't really care when the image is built. It can be rebuilt every other day, I don't really care. Because I'll just get something that's approximately CentOS that I need. You know, but I don't need CentOS on June 12th that actually runs all my apps. You know, that gets a little bit harder. That's when you want a certified Ubuntu image or a certified RHEL image where like Ubuntu says, we created this, we created Ubuntu 12 or whatever, I don't know what version they're at now. Where, what are they at? 56. 1404. 1404. So 1404 is out. And I want a Docker image that's certified that's really 1404 with a minimal build or whatever. And they'll eventually, you know, the, the, the philosophy or the methodology that they use to build that will eventually solidify and everyone will kind of understand, oh, okay, that's cool, that's a basic Docker image. And then when you build it, when you create it, you'll say, oh, let me do an app to get update, you know, update everything, or yum update, bam, and then, you know, you'll, you'll start to be able to use Docker files that know how to handle those certified images. That's kind of what, what I'm seeing already happen. I mean, that's what's going to happen overall, so I suspect Ubuntu and Debian and everybody else want to do the same thing. Can, can you Sorry. collapse a, 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 a migrated image into a base image? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. That's one of the features that is on the RFE list. I looked that up. Um, there, the, uh, there's an RFE out, a request for enhancement out to, to do that. Because, yeah, you want to crush it back together, right? Some people are like, eh, it's cool, but I just want to crush it together. I don't want different layers. You know, I just want it to be like as small of an image as I can get. So you could update the uh, operating system over time and then just crash it back to the Yeah, that's an RFE. That doesn't exist yet. That's why Docker's not at 1.0 yet. 
some of those types of features. They talked about it at that summit two weeks ago. They were like, a lot of these things, we don't, we don't know where it's at. So, I mean, we're not done yet, you know, basically that's what they said. Um, so, another interesting one, check this out. So, a piece of software, the registry server. So, you can use that public registry, or you can just do this. Like, check this out. This is how hard it is to run a Docker registry server. So, like, this is going to burn up, like, 500 megabytes of my little whatever. But, and you can see they built it with a Docker file, clearly, because it has a whole bunch of layers. Every time you do Docker files, every run command is essentially a layer. Now, you can see, I don't know that I want to sit here and let it run all day and eat up all my bandwidth. But when I get done, this will literally just run a registry server. And on port 5000, I can literally, what I can literally do is I can do Docker images. And you'll see these guys, all I do is tag them. Like, like say I was running on local host, I would literally do, this is how I would, once I had a Docker registry running locally, this is what I would do. I would do Docker, tag, and I would say like CentOS 6 or 5, whatever. And then I would call it, you know, 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 slash, you know, and then I'd call it whatever I want. If I tag it that way, and then I do a Docker push of this guy, I literally just give it that full thing. It'll fail because there's no Docker push. It'll fail because I don't have it. There's no valid end, end registry running here, but if it did, it would push it into that registry. That's literally how easy it is. And if I want to push it to the to the public registry, so like say I wanted to do this, Docker images, let's do Docker or tag. Let's do this. Now mind you, I can't redistribute these guys because of you know uh, trademark restriction. You know, I can't really push these out. But if I want to tag this, you know, I want to tag that guy as Father Linux slash rel 7 b dash base, and then I want to Docker push this guy. I can literally push this guy to the public. To the public. Why do I keep doing this? Um, so you'll see it'll start to push it out there. So it's buffering it to disk locally. Now let me go out to the Docker I/O so I can show you what that looks like. Docker .io. So I can log into Docker I/O. And this is the public registry. You'll see that I have. Where the heck are my Where's the white collar at? What was that? <laughs> well, the, the white collar father went next. Oh, the white collar father went next? Oh, there we go, index. So, and I'll go to. The there we go. So you see it's pushing a RHEL 7 one out there. It's initialized, but it's not active yet because I haven't actually fully pushed it out there. It's actually it's actually pushing it right now. And I'm going to kill that just because I don't actually want to do that. But I want to do a Docker delete on that. Sorry, what is it? Remove, sorry. Or RMI. RMI. So untag. And then I want to go out here and delete this guy, basically. So you can kind of see I don't want to leave this guy out here running forever, but... So you can see I still have that guy locally, though. Thank you. 